In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Today in the Gospel, the Lord reminds us that we're all called to the banquet of life as long as we make sure that we don't exclude anyone else. Let us ask God's forgiveness and mercy for the times we have excluded others and know that the Lord is rich in mercy. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You plead for us as you sit at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us all of our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you. We glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who caused the minds of the faithful to unite in a single purpose, grant your people to love what you command and desire what you promise, that amid the uncertainties of this world, our hearts may be fixed on that place where true gladness is found, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, I know their works and their thoughts, and I come to gather nations of every language. They shall come and see my glory. I will set a sign among them. From them I will send fugitives to the nations, to Tarshish, Put, and Lud, Mosak, to Baal, and Javan, to the distant coastlands that have never heard of my fame or seen my glory. And they shall proclaim my glory among the nations. They shall bring all your brothers and sisters from all the nations as an offering to the Lord on horses and in chariots, in carts, upon mules and dromedaries to Jerusalem, my holy mountain, says the Lord. Just as the Israelites bring their offering to the house of the Lord in clean vessels. Some of these I will take as priests and Levites, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Faithfulness. 
bless and yours forever. Go out to A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, you have forgotten the exhortation addressed to you as children. My son, do not disdain the discipline of the Lord or lose heart when reproved by him. For whom the Lord loves, he disciplines. He scourges every son he acknowledges. Endure your trials as a discipline. God treats you as sons. For what son is there whom his father does not discipline? At the time, all discipline seems a cause, not for joy, but for pain. Yet later, it brings the peaceful fruit of righteousness to those who are trained by it. So strengthen your drooping hands and your weak knees. Make straight paths for your feet, that what is lame may not be disjointed, but healed. The word of the Lord. Thanks. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus passed through the towns and villages, teaching as he went and making his way to Jerusalem. Someone asked him, Lord, will only a few people be saved? He answered them, strive to enter through the narrow gate. For many, I tell you, will attempt to enter, but will not be strong enough. After the master of the house has arisen and locked the door, then will you stand outside knocking and saying, Lord, open the door for us. He will say to you in reply, I do not know where you are from. And you will say, we ate and drank in your company and taught in our streets. Then he will say to you, I do not know where you are from. Depart from me, all you evildoers and there will be wailing and grinding of teeth when you see Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and all the prophets in the kingdom of God, and you yourselves cast out. And people will come from the east and the west, from the north and the south, and will recline at table in the kingdom of God. For behold, some are last who will be first, and some are first who will be last. The Gospel of the Lord. One of the insights that I gain as I get older is that many of the values, the almost eternal truths that I have learned over the years really were something that I learned around the dinner table at home with our family. That comes to mind as we see in the gospel Jesus giving us the image of understanding what our life is about and our destiny is about in living with him forever in terms of being able to share a meal, being able to sit down at table with one another. The first lesson that I learned was wait your turn. In a family of nine children, as the food was passed around, no one had a privileged place. It just was a matter of who was next and we had to wait our turn. No one had a priority because of their age or the work that they did or where they had to go, but in fact, everyone 
had to wait their turn. That doesn't seem to be what Jesus is seeing in those who come to him asking about coming to the meal even though they have known him. They think they have a privileged place because he ate and drank with them and he preached to them in their streets and so that association should give them a leg up. But Jesus tells them that they have to wait their turn, that there are others as well who need to be taken into consideration and none of us should ever claim to have a privileged place before the Lord because it is something that comes by God's calling and God's grace. The second thing I learned is that we were always told that everybody has to eat. There had to be food in a way that was shared so that everyone was given a chance and everyone had the same hungers. The people in the gospel seem to forget that there are others also who hunger for the bread of life. They think that their closed circle of associates or people in their own group deserve to be fed, ignoring the hungers of others. Jesus reminds them that they really are not thinking as God thinks. They do not know, as we hear in the first reading, God's ways as opposed to our ways. And so they should look at how the others in the world to share the same hunger that they have. The food they take is not just for their entertainment, but rather to satisfy a hunger that others have. And finally, we were told that if you take the food, you should eat it because there could not be any wasting of food. There was a recognition of the the finite amount of food to go around, just as there is a finite amount of goods in the world. Sometimes the more developed nations begin to think that the world is all theirs, and we act as though everyone else is ignored. And so we are very wasteful of our energy, of the resources that we have, of the opportunities that we have of sharing the goods at the table of life. And so the Lord tells us today, if we act that way, if we do not wait our turn, if we do not recognize the hunger of everyone else, and if we waste, that he will say, I do not know where you are coming from. The real solution in all of this is to listen to that image once again that Jesus gives us. Try to enter the narrow gate. The narrow gate was one that meant a person who entered it had to take their time to go through it, but also to lower their heads because of the small space that was there. Jesus is calling us to have the kind of humility that recognizes that people around the world have the same hungers that we do, that there is a finite amount of goods that we should share, and also that we should be willing always to wait our turn. Yes, so many of the lessons that we learn were around our family dinner table, just as they continue to be around all family dinner tables. That's what we have in common with people around the world, from north and south, east and west. We are all in this together as we live on this tiny speck of cosmic dust floating around the great universe. That God, God calls us to recognize that we are responsible for one another, that we also should be willing to make room at the table of life for those who have so little. And that begins by lowering our heads to enter into the narrow gate. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting.
With the humility of those who lower their heads to enter the narrow gate, we raise our voices in solidarity for the needs of all God's people. For the church, may we remain true to our mission of calling people of every race, language, and way of life to share in Christ's saving banquet. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all government leaders, that they may be open to listen to the voice of God expressed in the needs of those they serve, especially those easily forgotten and overlooked. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For first responders and those who protect our families and streets, may they be kept safe from all harm and be encouraged to know We pray for them this day. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. As we share this Eucharist with the homebound and the sick, may God inspire us always to reach out to them with kindness and support so they may know that they will be saved from loneliness and neglect. We pray to the Lord. Lord. Loving God, give us the strength and the courage to enter the narrow gate so that in humbling ourselves, we may come to know more fully our duty to care for one another, which we ask in the holy name of Jesus. Amen. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. Lord, who gained for yourself a people by adoption through the one sacrifice offered once for all, bestow graciously on us, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace in your church through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up, the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty, our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity and even fashioned for us a remedy of our mortality itself that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. indeed holy O Lord the font of all holiness make holy therefore these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ at the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion he took bread and giving thanks broke it gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples saying, 
Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, my brother bishops, the clergy, and all your people, Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may, may, we may praise and we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God. You take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy to enter under my roof, but only say the word of my soul shall be healed.
an act of spiritual communion. My dear Jesus, I believe that you are present in this most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart. I embrace you, unite myself wholly to you. Never allow me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Complete within us, O Lord, we pray, the healing work of your mercy, and graciously perfect and sustain us, so that in all things we may please you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Again, thank you for joining us for this celebration. And I want to uh, ask your prayers for two things. First of all, for all of our students, uh, young and old, who will be returning to school in these days that their year may be safe and very prosperous. Uh, we need to do everything possible to support our young people as they take up the work of education and all of our parents as well, and teachers and staff. Also, I ask your prayers as I uh, will not be here next week because I will be going to Rome uh, for the consistory. Uh, the Holy Father has asked the Cardinals uh, to remain after the uh, appointment or the uh, celebration of new cardinals on next Saturday, the 25th. And he will ask us to remain there for the next week for a couple of days uh, for a meeting as he can explain then uh, to all of us uh, the uh, ins and outs of the reform of the Roman Curia. It has been a work that's gone on for almost 10 years now throughout the entire pontificate of Pope Francis. And he um, asks us to be there uh, during that time, Father, our Bishop uh, Mark Bartosik will be having uh, the Mass next week in my place. Uh, he is the Vicar of Vicariat too. So continue to pray for our students, but also pray for me, the Holy Father, and the Cardinals as we take up this work. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Thank you.